So I want to talk about how to calculate GFR and renal plasma flow. Before we do that, I need to introduce this term called clearance. So clearance is the rate at which a, a substance is cleared from plasma. Okay, we calculate it in terms of milliliters per minute. And I want to, if you want to be even more specific, you could say clearance is the volume of plasma that is completely cleared of a substance per unit time. And that sounds kind of confusing, so I need to illustrate this. So we're going to use creatinine. We're going to say creatinine. Creatinine is a substance we're going to talk about a lot. So let's say creatinine clearance is 10 milliliters per minute. Now I'm going to say that we have a blood vessel with a lot of blood and plasma. So remember blood equals to plasma plus red blood cells. I bring this up because we're going to see it again, so I'm just going to bring it up now. So now we have this blood. We have all this creatinine in here. Okay. If our creatinine clearance is 10 milliliters per minute, that means every minute we're taking 10 milliliters of blood and we're freeing it of creatinine. All that creatinine is going to be sent out into the kidney and it's going to be removed from the blood, 10 milliliters worth. Next minute, another 10 milliliters of blood is cleared of all its creatinine. So now this 10 milliliters of blood doesn't have creatinine anymore. Another minute, another 10 milliliters. Okay? So it basically means the rate at which our substance is being cleared from plasma. We can calculate it with this equation here. This urine, uh, the urine concentra concentration of the substance, that's the creatinine, times the urine flow rate over plasma concentration of a substance. Now, if the, the clearance of a substance is equal to the GFR, this means there is no net secretion or reabsorption of the substance. And I need to, I, I want to explain this a little more. So if the amount that we filter through is exactly the same amount that we, that we excrete, that means there's no net secretion or reabsorption. So note that secretion and reabsorption happens in the tubules after we filter through the, um, the, glomerular, the glomerulus. When we say, notice that it says no net. So you can still have secretion and reabsorption, uh, reabsorption and secretion, but there's no net change. And thus, what is excreted is exactly the same as what was filtered. Now, if our clearance or our excretion is less than our filtration, which is the GFR, what must have happened? If you're getting rid of less than was actually filtered, then that means that you must have reabsorbed some of it, okay? There must have been some net tubular reabsorption so that the amount that you actually, that eventually leaves is the less than the amount that was filtered through. Finally, the opposite. If you are getting rid of more than was actually filled through, if you're clearing more than was actually filled through, then you must have been secreting something, okay? And now we're going to see why this is relevant. So this is relevant because it's going to help us calculate the GFR. I want to explain the relevance of the GFR again. GFR is the filtration rate in the kidney, and that's basically a measure of how well the kidney is filter, uh, functioning. It measures how well the kidney is filtering and functioning. So we want to calculate that, and we can calculate that very well by measuring the inulin clearance. And that's because inulin clearance equals to GFR, and we just talked about that. When is the clearance equal to GFR? When, it, when the substance, there's no net reabsorption or secretion. So inulin is completely filtered through the glomerulus, and then it is neither reabsorbed or secreted by the renal tubules. Thus, clearance will be equal to GFR. Now, inulin is the only perfect marker for GFR, okay? It's the only good one, but unfortunately, the only great one, only perfect one. However, it's not an endogenous substance, so we have to put it through intravenously. We have to take some inulin that we have and then inject it into the veins and then measure its clearance. Now, that's a little pain in the butt, so that creatinine is the next closest marker for GFR. And we like it because our body makes it, so we don't have to do any injection. However, creatinine has its own drawback, and that creatinine clearance, the clearance of creatinine, is a little higher than GFR. So why would that be? I, I told you before, why would your clear, uh, cre clearance be higher than GFR? Because you are secreting a little bit more of that by the renal tubules later on. And that's shown in this graph here, where we can see we estimated GFR using creatinine levels. And you can see that this, this dark line is higher than the true GFR, which is the dashed line. And that's because we're secreting creatinine into the renal tubules. Now, I also want to add that we're looking at clearance here. You, clearance is also related to this levels of, of creatinine in the serum, okay? Because if you have high, uh, let's say you have very low cl uh, clearance of creatinine, your kidney's not working, you're not clearing it very well, what's going to happen to your serum creatinine levels? If you're not getting rid of, 
of creatinine is going to build up in your serum, so you're going to have high creatinine. So thus, that can mean we can use these serum creatinine levels as an estimate of someone's GFR as well. Now I want to talk about how to calculate renal plasma flow and blood flow. So again, there is a difference. What was the difference again? Where blood equals to plasma plus red blood cells. So first we can calculate the plasma flow. We can use paraaminohyperic acid clearance, okay? Paraaminohyperic acid clearance equals to renal plasma flow because almost all of the pH, I'm gonna call it pH, that is brought to the kidney by the renal plasma flow is excreted. Now I need to draw that out for you. So this is our afferent arterial. This is the glomerulus. And then this is the efferent arterial. Okay, so all the PAH in this afferent arterial is going to end up in here into the glomerulus. Okay, and then it's all going to be secreted. It's all going to be secreted and then excreted. So all of this that's brought to the kidney by the renal plasma flow is going to be cleared. So thus, clearance of PAH equals to renal plasma flow. Okay, I just want to be even more ex explicit. Clearance of pH equals to renal plasma flow. Now we can derive renal blood flow measurements from the renal plasma flow. The way we do that is through hematocrit. The hematocrit is a fraction of red blood cell volume that is made up of red blood cells. Okay, so the remainder then, 1 minus hematocrit, must be the fraction of red blood cell volume made up of plasma. Makes sense. Okay, if this if hematocrit is telling you the fraction that is red blood cells, then one minus hematocrit must be telling you this, because it equals to one. These two add up equals to one. So thus you can use this equation, renal blood flow equals to renal plasma flow over one minus hematocrit. Now I'm gonna explain how this you might be a little confused and you still understand it. I was at least. If you don't and you want to know, just follow along, or you can just brute force memorize this equation. Uh, and then just skip ahead. But I just told you that hematocrit is the fraction of blood volume that is made up of red blood cells. So I can also call hematocrit equals to red blood cells over uh, blood volume. And actually, let's skip that. I'm going to call it 1 minus hematocrit. 1 minus hematocrit is the fraction of blood volume made up of plasma. Plasma volume over blood volume. Okay, and we care about we can, we we can now use this and substitute it here. Okay, so renal plasma flow. We're going to substitute one minus chromatic with plasma volume over blood volume. And now we're going to flip it. We're going to divide it by the two things. E goes to say RPF times blood volume over plasma volume. So now we're going to cancel out these plasmas and now we have renal and so that's how you can calculate renal blood flow with this equation. Renal blood flow equals renal plasma volume minus 1 minus hematocrit. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through an equation. If you don't want to do it, just skip ahead. If you do, follow along. Patient has a urine flow rate of two milliliters per minute, so that's V. Plasma concentration of pH of 0 0.02 milligrams per milliliter. Urine concentration of 200 milligrams per milliliter. Hematocrit is 0 0.50. What is his renal blood flow? Well, question is, what is his renal blood flow? We have this equation right here, okay? So the question is, how, how do we calculate this? We know hematocrit, so we need to find, figure out renal plasma flow. But what is renal plasma flow? Well, fortunately, we know that renal plasma flow equals to pH clearance, right? We just said that, pH clearance. So now, now the, the next question is, how do we figure out pH clearance? Well, I gave you the equation for this a little bit before. The equation was uh, urine concentration of pH times volume of the flow rate. Flow rate urine flow rate times the plasma concentration. Well, fortunately, we have the values for this. So let's just plug it in. We're going to plug and chug. 
So urine concentration is 1200 milligrams times uh, urine flow rate is 2 milliliters per minute over plasma concentration. Plasma concentration is 0 0.02. You take out your calculator or your math whiz, you're going to tell your, re your pla pH clearance and thus your pla uh, renal plasma flow is going to be 1200 milliliters per minute. Now, how do we calculate renal blood, uh, blood flow? Again, we go back to this equation here. And so now we're going to take 1 minus hematocrit. So 1 minus hematocrit. Hematocrit is 0 0.05, 0 0.50. And so now your answer is going to be 1,200, 2,400 milliliters per minute. And that's your renal blood flow. So that's how you calculate it. Um, well, that's it for our clearance, topic of clearance and calculating both GFR and renal plasma and blood flow.